Two days after the largest climate change march in history, more than 120 world leaders gathered here in New York for a one-day United Nations climate summit. Tuesday's meeting took place ahead of the larger 200 Nations summit in Paris in 2015, when delegates will attempt to finalize an agreement to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon hosted Tuesday's summit. Now, today was a great day, a historic day. Never before have so many leaders gathered to commit to action on climate change. I thank every one of you who came to New York with ambition and commitment. A new coalition of governments, business, finance, multilateral development banks, and civil society leaders announced their commitment to mobilize upwards of $200 billion for financing low carbon and climate resilient development. As we work together on the road to Lima and Paris in December 2015, uh, December 2014 and 2015, let us look back on today as the day we decided as a human family to put our house in order to make it livable for future generations. Uh, today's summit has shown that we can rise to the climate challenge. Hollywood actor and environmental activist Leonardo DiCaprio also addressed the UN summit on climate change on Tuesday. He was recently named a United Nations Messenger of Peace. Now must be our moment for action. We need to put a price tag on carbon emissions and eliminate government subsidies for oil, coal and gas companies. We need to end the free ride that industrial polluters have been given in the name of a free market economy. They do not deserve our tax dollars. They deserve our scrutiny, for the economy itself will die if our ecosystems collapse. This is the most urgent of times and the most urgent of messages. Honored delegates, leaders of the world, I pretend for a living, but you do not. The people made their voices heard on Sunday around the world, and the momentum will not stop. But now it is your turn. The time to answer humankind's greatest challenge is now. We beg of you to face it with courage and honesty. While 120 leaders took part in the UN Climate Summit, the leaders of several key nations, including China, India and Russia, opted not to attend. President Obama addressed the summit. Because of the almost unprecedented effort of this coalition, I think we now have an opportunity to send a very clear message that the world is united, that uh, all of us uh, are committed to making sure that we degrade and ultimately destroy uh, not only ISIL, but also uh, the kinds of uh, extremist ideologies that would lead to so much bloodshed. We turn back to President Obama. As one of America's governors has said, we are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change and the last generation that can do something about it. So today I am here personally as the leader of the world's largest economy and its second largest emitter to say that we have begun to do something about it. The United States has made ambitious investments in clean energy and ambitious reductions in our carbon emissions. We now harness three times as much electricity from the wind and ten times as much from the sun as we did when I came into office. Within a decade, our cars will go twice as far on a gallon of gas, and already every major automaker offers electric vehicles. We've made unprecedented investments to cut energy waste in our homes and our buildings and our appliances, all of which will save consumers billions of dollars, and we are committed to helping communities build climate-resilient infrastructure. So all told, these advances have helped create jobs, grow our economy, and drive our carbon pollution to its lowest levels in nearly two decades, proving that there does not have to be a conflict between a sound environment and strong economic growth. Also on Tuesday, more than 30 countries set a deadline to end deforestation by 2030. 
But Brazil, which has the largest continuous rainforest in the world, refused to sign on, saying the plan conflicts with its own laws and targets. If successful, the plan could reduce carbon emissions by an estimated 8 billion tons per year, the equivalent of emissions by all of the world's 1 billion cars.